We're here at AUVSI 2014 in Orlando with Roger Hoskins from Pentec. Uh, Roger, I'd like to ask you a couple questions about uh, how you see things. Um, a lot of uncertainty this past year with the military defense budget. I think, you know, maybe a little bit more with some budget deals in place. But um, there's certainly been a lot of cutbacks that have affected um, our industry, uh, our customers' um, situations where they have to like, reduce their costs. A lot of cases, they're reducing a lot of their engineering staff. And that means they, they seem to be relying more on our, our industry and the technical expertise of companies like yours. Can you tell us, you know, what's happening and how's that affecting how you guys operate? Yes, what we're doing is uh, instead of traditionally selling just board level products to our customers, we're actually integrating those boards into systems like recording systems and offering a complete sub system that's an application that they would otherwise have to develop themselves right. using our boards. Mm -hmm. And we're providing the software tools to make all that work. It gives them a leg up, it saves them some risk, it saves them some cost, and shorter, quicker time to market. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously the stuff that they would have done by themselves exactly. in the past, and now you're taking over that exactly. burden. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, this whole idea of a so box level system, this was traditionally our industry a very board level centric. There were single board computers, there was DSC boards, all that kind of stuff. But now this uh, we're emerging as sort of a second center of gravity, this idea of a box level system. But the boards aren't going away, they're still there. Um, but how do you see those technologies applied to unmanned systems? I mean, people have to make a choice between are they going to do a rack of backplane boards or a box? I mean, how do you see that sort of choice? I, I think what's happening is, again, uh, as with the recorder system that we're talking about, people are looking for us to give them a more cohesive set of boards that perhaps has a function that within that board set has been proven by us to work mm -hmm. so that it's ready to run their application. So while they're putting various boards into various sized chassis inside of UAVs, mm -hmm. some of the basic functions that they need to do are there. So for example, we will do things like digital down conversion uh, to uh, bring signals down to baseband. We'll do things like uh, capturing data with triggers, uh, range gates for radar. Uh, we're doing time stamping from GPS signals. We're integrating all those functions yep. into the boards so that when those boards go into the system, they're, they're functioning at a higher level and supported with the software. It sounds like now Pentec is definitely part of almost every part of the signal chain. You're capturing the data, you're processing, but you're also storing the data, so you really are at all those points, right? And yeah. we're also offering now, for the last several years, RF products that will actually take the signals from the antenna, boost them, filter them, and translate them down in frequency so they can be connected directly to our A to D converters. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about uh, this whole idea of swap. They say, you know, size, weight, and power. That's what everyone's talking about. That's a requirement that uh, keeps coming up. Um, yeah. Now, uh, cer certainly, uh, it's making life harder and more of a challenge for uh, for a lot of things because, you know, the, the processors are definitely giving a lot, of, a lot of heat and they want to pack a lot of processing on. But then again, there is sort of a lot of integration going on. And that's sort of a plus for us. But um, yeah. what, what do you see some of the pluses and minuses out there in trying to, trying to meet that requirement? In, in fact, what happens is, as the devices like FPGAs, for example, which are prominent on our boards, get larger, they dissipate a lot more power. So yeah. one of the big problems is thermal management, trying to get the heat out of the package. So there's some innovative ways of managing uh, heat using things like uh, composite carbon materials and other structures. The other thing is trying to get data out of the products that the bandwidths and the speeds and still do so at a relatively small form factor, lightweight. And so for, for that reason, uh, we're also seeing customers shifting more towards some fiber optic solutions for getting data instead of traditional heavy copper cables. Mm. Uh, now finally, uh, could you maybe tell me what's new about at Pentec, what's some of the new stuff going on? I think one of the interesting products that, that are specifically suited for uh, people at this show would be our new uh, Flexor product line, which uses the fiber optic interface based on the Vita standard 66.4, mm -hmm. which gives you 12 gigabytes per second across 24 optical lanes going between a VPX module right. and the VPX backplane. So that instead of copper signals connecting the modules to the backplane, we're now able to connect directly mm -hmm. light signals from the module to the backplane. It gives you the advantage of lighter weight, higher speeds, and you can go for distances of kilometers, right. which you couldn't do with, with yeah. copper. And again, optical backplanes, that's something that's interesting to talk about for years. Yeah, and finally, have. the technology's there and there's a need for it, too. So exactly. Yes. So I think in the next year or two years, you're going to see a lot more adoption of, of fiber optic technology in these kinds of systems. Yeah, sounds good. Well, thanks for your time, Roger. Appreciate All right, my it. pleasure. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.